I had a telephone call from Ronnie Wallman, who was then the head of Light Entertainment, who asked me if I'd call over to Lime Grove and look at some film. He had a film to show me. I went over there and the film came on. It was an American version of This Is Your Life, which I'd never heard of in my life. Uh, the life they were doing was that of Victor McLachlan. And I watched it absolutely fascinated. And when it was over, he said, what do you think of it? I said, think of it. Boy, I said, can I produce it, Ronnie? I don't want to pay him for it. Just let me get, let me get my hands on it. I'd love to produce it. And he said, that's what you're down for. Blimey. Your life, Eamon Andrews. <laughs> who were going to do a famous footballer, Stanley Matthews. But unfortunately, some newspaper reporter found out. I therefore had to cancel it. I had then until Sunday to get a new program together. The only person whose life I knew anything about was Eamon Andrews. And that was the life we decided would you, to do. Uh, <laughs> would you tell us, Freddie, thanks a million. Uh, tell us why you have Freddie Mills here, Eamon. I have Freddie Mills here because you told me this was going to be his life, and I kept him all day. <laughs> People watch This Is Your Life, not because of the story, but to see who it is. More people watch This Is Your Life standing up and sitting down. They're walking through the room and they see This Is Your Life, and they say, I wonder who it is. And they stay and watch it, and that's where it gets its audience from. Yes. Really? You know, on the day, one of the big problems we have is to get all the people together. And then, since they're not, most of the time, they're families and non-professional people or not used to going on television, the object of the day is to relax them and to get across roughly a rough idea of what they're going to say without scripting them. You can't script them, it's impossible. They'd never do the same thing twice. But to find out what the story is that they have to tell and then to get a sort of sequence arranged so that they know when they're coming on and where they're going to sit so that they can relax and enjoy the programme. Yeah. Yeah. But this is the real life. Yeah. 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 I know that Eamon loves live television. I think he's extraordinary. Uh, if you, as a producer or anyone else, was to sit at a desk and phone up an artist, almost any artist, and say, look, I've got a program for you to do. Um, I won't give you a script, I'll just give you an outline. Most of the people that are coming on the show will be amateur, and uh, will, you'll not know exactly what they're going to say. I want you to do the program in uh, 28 minutes, 35 seconds, uh, do it without rehearsal, and do it live. I think you'll find the phone would go dead on you, because that would be too terrifying for most people to contemplate. He thrives on it. He likes it, and we sometimes make it as difficult as we can. Not deliberately to him, but we tackle anything, whether he's landing on it by a helicopter or coming on water or whatever he's doing, which he is the program as far as I'm concerned. I can't imagine anyone else doing the program, and I don't think the program would exist as it is without him. When it is live, live, really live on air, um, that's extra exciting. I mean, Richard Gordon, the, uh, the uh, man who writes the Doctor books, was um, one of our subjects. And uh, Eamon went up to him live on air, red light on camera, and said, Richard Gordon, this is your life. And he looked at Eamon and said, balls, and walked off. We were setting up a program with Bernard Braden, and as I understand it, uh, obviously Barbara Kelly knew about the story, uh, knew what we were doing. And um, they had a phone call, and Bernie answered the phone, and it was a straightforward invitation from one of their friends to play cards the following Wednesday. And he called out to Barbara, can we play cards on Wednesday? And their grandchild, who'd been in on the meetings with Barbara and our research people, said, no, Granddad, you can't. You're doing This Is Your Life on Wednesday. And she was about six or some seven or something. So he phoned Damon up and said, look, I know, I know, and, and that was it, we had to cancel it. Do you always cancel if, if always. you... Always. <laughs> we like to think that we do one programme, and that particular programme relates to the person we're doing. It's as individual as his fingerprints, if you like. You know, that's his programme, it's his life. 